Are you ready, Jay? Mm -hmm. So I decided to do a rhetorical criticism on Earth First, um, entitled Dancing to Divine Music. <clears throat> um, Eco-terrorism, direct action, uh, wild hippies, uh, civil disobedience, tree spiking, uh, clashes with loggers and corporations, clashes with police, arrests. Um, these are some of the common ideas that people often think of when they hear of Earth First. Um, in large part, I believe, because um, some of those actions are what are called image events. Uh, Kevin DeLuca calls them image events. They're events that uh, are done specifically for uh, quick and easy dissemination to the mass media. Um, so I wanted to delve deeper into Earth First and see what underlies all of this, um, the public facade of Earth First. Um, so I went in search to answer the question of what are uh, alternative methods of resistance to Earth First. Uh, Earth First was a, is a radical environmental organization that was formed in the spring of 1980 by Dave Foreman and four other uh, gentlemen. They consider themselves redneck, libertarian, eco-warriors, and their tactics uh, essentially were individualistic in nature um, and uh, included uh, acts of like personal daring where they would go out and do things like tree spiking. Uh, tree spiking is when you go and put a spike into a tree and then when a logger tries to use like a chainsaw to cut a tree down, it not only damages their chainsaw, but it can actually injure the... Uh, logger as well. Um, but as the 80s progressed, they started uh, Earth First, some of their main uh, members started putting forth some uh, pretty scary, funky ideas. Um, they essentially said that uh, the human species was a virus to the planet, um, that starvation in the third world is a positive thing for um, population control and that HIV and AIDS is great because it helps aid in population control. Um, and this was around the same time that Judy Bari, uh, who I'll talk about a little bit more later, uh, entered the scene and brought the ideas of social justice into Earth First. Uh, she essentially said that you can't really address a society that's destroying the environment without addressing the society that's actually doing that destruction. Um, so eventually, uh, the California, Oregon branch of Earth First, um, led by Judy Bari and her compatriot Daryl Cherney, who's still activist in our area, um, led a movement uh, which actually um, started what became the feminization of Earth First and changed uh, the organization uh, forever. Uh, there were huge battles. Um, it was Earth First was very patriarchal. Uh, they were like pretty disrespectful to women, um, and eventually the, uh, the social justice uh, feminist faction won majority control, and the founding members um, and the like patriarchal type uh, individuals left Earth First, and a renewed Earth First that they called Ecotopia Earth First arrived. Um, the framework will be an introduction, which I just concluded. Um, I'll do a description of my artifacts, describe the units of analysis, apply the units of analysis, and then have my conclusion. Uh, I analyzed four different artifacts. Uh, artifact one is an article by Judy Bari entitled Revolutionary Ecology, Biocentrism, and Deep Ecology. Artifact two is Our Message to Green Diamond, uh, a letter from Earth First. Green Diamond is a corporation in the area that prides itself on being sustainable when they're anything but not, and their ex-president sits on the HSU Board of Advancement. Um, Artifact 3 is an article, again by Judy Barty, entitled The Feminization of Earth First, and Artifact 4 is On Nonviolence, A Guide by Earth First. So, biocentrism, um, in Artifact 1, biocentrism is essentially the view that um, humans are just one small part, um, they're just one species among many, and that all are connected, and that uh, all life has intrinsic value, 
um, and that the way in which we interact uh, with the world uh, has significant implications. Um, there's so much I would love to go into, but basically she, uh, her article follows a framework that says biocentrism contradicts capitalism because capitalism takes more than it gives back, which is contrary to the views of nature. She then goes into how, uh, how, cap how biocentrism contradicts capital, uh, communism and socialism because communism and socialism uh, just talk about how we're going to more equally distribute the spoils of raping the earth. Um, and then she goes into what that means for the movement and talks about how um, that essentially biocentrism is a revolutionary um, concept and that uh, her failure um, to recognize it as revolutionary was uh, a major part of her being uh, bombed. She was, her and Daryl Cherney were had a bomb placed in their car when they were organizing Redwood Summer and um, they had members of the FBI infiltrate their group and try and misrepresent them and all kinds of things. And she said essentially that the system is too big and that uh, the only way to change it is massive non-cooperation and stress her views to a commitment for non-violence, which we'll get into later. Uh, the next artifact was a message uh, to Green Diamond. Um, it was so impressive, like it seemed like it was written by like a, a scholar or like someone with a serious background in edu like in forestry. It essentially said, <clears throat> used uh, Green Diamond's rhetoric against them and said, this is why we're unhappy with you. You're destroying old forest lands. It's having this effect. It's destroying hillsides. It's um, leading to the extinction of these specific animals, a spotted owl, this and that. Um, this is why we're unhappy. This is what we would like you to do. Um, and it was just immaculate. Um, and I don't have time to go into more. Um, the feminization of Earth First, my third artifact, essentially was just talking about how, um, how, the fem how by Judy Barry was like the first woman leader of Earth First, and she said she was bombed during Redwood Summer, which was the largest like Earth First nonviolence. Uh, it was like a summer committed to nonviolence, which had the biggest audience, and people came from across the country to participate in. Um, and she said when she was bombed um, that it was the women who rose up and took her place and that um, after her bombing in Redwood Summer, uh, over 75% of the leaders of Earth First became women. Um, and then she goes into ecofeminism, uh, which is essentially just the idea that they're against any and all oppression and domination. Sorry. Uh, the last artifact was on nonviolence. Uh, it was like a 20-page document that like connected their rhetoric with people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Jesus, um, Gandhi, uh, Judy Bari, and then just like outlined policies and procedures for nonviolence. Um, so that's what I'll say on that one. Uh, feminist criticism: My description of the unit of the analysis. Feminist criticism involves two basic steps: the analysis of construction of gender or whatever aspect of identity is your focus in the artifact studied and to an exploration of what the artifacts suggest about how the ideology of domination is constructed and maintained or how it can be challenged and transformed. Um, that's by Foss. And if your analysis of the artifacts reveals that it departs from an accepted of an ideology of domination and challenges the status quo or creates a different ideology in which to operate, you will use the analysis to contribute to an understanding of how individuals can use rhetoric to claim agency and engage in acts of self-determination. Another focus a critic may discover in an artifact that facilitates assumption of agency is to explore the artifacts as a model worthy of emulation for creating non-dominating structures and relationships. Gender, claiming agency, self-determination, and worthy of emulation. I really wish I had the time to elaborate on all of this, um, but essentially as far as gender goes, uh, Earth First was founded as a very like patriarchal organization and feminism basically came in and kicked its ass. Um, and uh, which I think is great. Um, and uh, so they essentially claimed agency, took self-determination, and transformed a radical environmental agency, a uh, radical environmental movement, and um, denounced tree spiking and things that harmed individuals, made efforts to like, uh, they formed a, a union 
for labor work, for like lumberers to work with Earth First and to direct their uh, cause towards their oppression, which is the corporations that were doing the destruction. Um, there's also other gender issues that are like enacted from outside onto the group. Uh, but really what I want to go into is uh, their claiming agency and their self-determination, which for time's sake I'll have to do that with um, the next couple thoughts. Um, I came up with the title, um, John Muir was a conservationist that was very influential in the Earth First movement, and he was also the founder of the Sierra Club. And he once said that when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find that it is bound fast by a thousand invisible cords that cannot be broken to everything else in the universe. I fancy I can hear a heart beating in every crystal and every grain of sand and see a wise plan in the making and shaping and placing of every one of them all seem to be dancing to divine music. Um, eventually, I, eventually, essentially uh, what I found is that there are some like serious and amazing underlying theories, principles, practices, philosophies uh, underlying Earth First. They build alternative communities um, within the Earth First movement and within their families that are separate from the dominant cultural narrative. Um, so that's one of their methods of resistance, is finding a different way to live as a human being within the world. Um, they also, uh, as I kind of discussed, uh, theories of like eco-feminism and biocentrism, where all life has intrinsic value and that all things are connected. Um, there was also a lot about spirituality, um, biocentrism going back to Francis of uh, Assisi, uh, who was the, one of the most venerated Catholic um, saints from like 1200 who essentially said that God lives in all things um, and uh, then also like earth and spirituality Native American um, and then also like earth like paganism type stuff um, so essentially some people view themselves as their churches are being destructed and they're um, you know guarding them um, and protecting them and that they're doing it for everyone um, the redwoods that we live in are one of the last ecosystems of its kind in the entire United States and they're very much smaller uh, than what people seem to think. I don't know how many people go up in the hills but it's called the redwood curtain for a reason and behind it there's just stumps for days and scorched earth. Um, so uh, their theories, their practices, they do like teach-ins where they teach people, learn about the environment learn about ways to communicate with people, learn to practice nonviolence, write, they just uh, have an abundance of things um, that they do. And so what I found was that there are many, numerous um, alternative methods of resistance to Earth First that just don't make it into um, the media. And I think also it's problematic in scholarly work because it's like, you know, we use artifacts, and a lot of the artifacts are like news articles or things we see on TV. So it's like they see this extreme stuff. You see like people who are like burying themselves in the in the roads so that bulldozers can't drive over them. They'll like bury themselves with just their heads sticking out so that bulldozers can't come down and get to the trees. Or they'll climb up and live in trees for, you know, six months, a year, two years. Things which I think are awesome and amazing and commendable. Um, but things like that are the things that like garner public attention. But there's little work on, um, you know, what's underlying all of this stuff. And really what it is is people who are wanting to live their life in a non-hierarchical way, in a collective society where people are honored and respected. Um, and where the planet, the you know natural ecosystems, what little is left, um, is guarded as sacred, and it's just very funny that not funny, it's disgusting. But um, people would have the audacity to call people eco terrorists when, for 15 to 20 years, they've uh, firmly committed to the practice of nonviolence. Um, so some of my research talks about how um, they. Uh, um, how essentially governments use ambiguous definitions of terrorism to squash dissent. So I found a lot of amazing things and um, these are people that are working behalf on all of us. Um, so in conclusion, I dedicate this work to Judy Bari, November 7th, 1949 to March 2nd, 1997. Rest in peace. And
and uh, I dedicate it to all of you. Thank you.